Evan uh, Van Order. I'm the Soil Conservationist in the Hardman office. Um, and so I get to work with uh, lots of producers on uh, irrigation projects. So it's kind of, uh, kind of fun over the years to see the transition of, of some irrigation improvements and all that. Um, so Bighorn County, uh, just to kind of look at some of those sources of irrigation water, if you're considering, uh, uh, or if you have an irrigation system now, you're, you're, well, I've got to figure out something. Okay. Um, this is a map of the Crow Tribe Irrigation Projects Unit. This is what they're currently working on uh, with the irrigation improvement project that they have. And so it highlights most of the major systems that we have um, in, the, in the county or uh, especially within the reservation. Um, the Bighorn uh, is a very large one, as you know, uh, along the Bighorn River. Um, and what these are are just diversions out of the, out of the rivers. Um, they have diversion dams. Uh, head gate control systems and other structures along the way uh, in the Hopi canals. And then as Tyler was referring to, these mile lines coming out of that. And so you see that throughout the valley, driving up and down, uh, mile line ditches that are supplying water uh, to various farms along the way. Um, so jurisdiction, BIA, irrigation, pro irrigation um, department, they, they oversee that um, and uh, administer that. So, uh, other systems you can see up to Little Horn. Um, uh, we have the agency, the Reno. Um, we have Lodgegrass up here where we get into Lodgegrass Creek. Um, uh, Lodgegrass number one and two, and there's a Willow Creek Dam is right up right there on the map. And so it's, there's also, this is irrigated through here too, through the Willow Creek. Um, and then the Bozeman Trail and uh, 40 Mile up towards Wyoming. Um, Vice versa, the 40 miles by lost grass and frozen uh, trails by water. Some of the acres that are under that, um, and this is again off of their uh, Bureau of Rex final programmatic EA uh, published in January for their irrigation improvement project, but it kind of highlights the number of acres under each of these systems um, that is currently being assessed, and then acres that they are not assessing right now, but could potentially be if improvements were made um, for a total of about 45,000, 46,000 acres in Bighorn County uh, on the reservation. So that's quite a significant amount of land um, there. So if you're here today and you're interested in irrigation, you might have, uh, uh, that might be where you're in one of these units or not. Um, but that's a major source of irrigation that we have in the county. Other ones that you are probably familiar with is uh, just south of Harden, the Two Leggings Canal uh, runs south of Harden up north uh, through the North Valley, and then the Low Line Canal runs uh, just north of Harden there uh, through the valley also, and then the Farmer's Ditch is also an offshoot basically of Two Leggings. Um, and so there's a number of irrigation districts uh, that uh, have been set up and uh, that you can work with uh, with irrigation projects. Keep hitting the wrong button, you see the laser beam. All right, so other water sources, if you're not on the irrigation districts or have acres under or shares is typically how they talk about it, um, water shares under a certain irrigation district. Um, you might have water rights, uh, diversion right out of surface water, uh, rivers, streams, ponds, reservoirs, as Tyler kind of highlighted all the different various setups. Um, but first thing you want to make sure is water rights. That's a big issue. Everyone wants to know, can I get water rights to irrigate this land? And, um, that is where you need to do the groundwork first um, to see if you, you have water rights, um, if you have a piece of ground that maybe was irrigated in the past, um, or if you're looking to improve or increase the number of acres, uh, figure out the water rights first. Um, so if you're on the reservation, BIA, Crow Water Resources, um, that's just the general office number there, they'll direct you to who they who you need to talk to. Um, and then also the state, Montana DNRC Water Resource Division up in Billings. Um, that's a handy number to have there if you got any questions on water rights. Um, and there is an online database too. If you've got a chunk of ground that has never been irrigated, um, I suppose that's a can of worms trying to get a water right for that big thing, huh? It, it can be, yes. Yeah. Um, a lot of questions come up about conservation district. Big Horn <coughs> Conservation District has reserve water rights that have been available. They're pretty much all applied for at least, uh, you know, and that's always a, um, and that's not applicable to everybody either. It just depends on where you're at. Um, but there's very few new water rights. Um, well, on, on something like this, the piece I'm thinking of is lays right next to the Little Horn River. 
Um, and I'm assuming there's no more pumping out of the rivers down here. You've got that pretty much shut off, don't they? It's, it's uh, one of those things where you have to go through these agencies and make sure that, you know, especially being within the reservation, you've got the, uh, the Crow Water uh, Resources Division to work with and, and making sure if it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. so, and then you, you hear about where, where they told us to call the state and the state told them to call the you know, the, the tribe. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's one of those things. That's why you got to get that figured out first before um, you move any further. That might take a little bit of a, and then you might have historic water rights, and that's, that's another thing. And, and what has been done with those water rights that were used 50 years ago, but now have it currently, and so that's a whole other issue too. If it's, those are still um, something you can use, and uh, oh, as long as we're talking about water rights, I have one more. That's a whole other workshop. <laughs> <laughs> um, you run into an awful lot of lease ground down here. Um, and there's a lot of the, the people who own that ground or have the rights on it that haven't, their family hasn't irrigated it in 20 or 30 years. Right. And uh, all the, all the uh, ditches and everything are still there. If a, a guy, a leasey, wanted to irrigate that land, would you have to pay all the backwater rights on something like that or can you just That would be pick a question for, for like, be a That would be for something they know, huh? That's but, funny because I've never got a straight answer out of them either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 outside of my pay grade. Uh, <laughs> so. uh, and then also, if you are doing any irrigation projects and you do have a water right for it, and if it does involve any installation, like as river banks or stream bank or some kind of work, there are going to be permits necessary for that, like 310 permits, 404 permits, etc., that you need to be aware of. Um, it's always the, the responsibility is on the person doing the work and on the, the landowner whose who's, uh, ground it's on to make sure these permits are in place. So just a fair warning if there's any projects you're thinking of or working on, consider those things. Other water sources that aren't as complicated as groundwater, as uh, um, Tyler mentioned, it's pretty limited for well water for irrigation use in Bighorn County. We just don't have those big aquifers that uh, have high flow rates and, and decent water quality in order for irrigation. Every year I get questions from people in town and Hardin, you know, it's like I got this well in my lot in town and I want to use it to water my yard or I did use it and now my yard's dead. Well, it's because our water quality in Hardin and, and in the valley is typically really high in salts and uh, you're just going to basically kill any vegetation you put that water on. So it's pretty rare to have a, in the Bighorn Valley to have a high quality uh, well that is high enough quality uh, to irrigate plants with. Surface water definitely is more suitable. Uh, so what you want to do is get a water test. You know, take a sample. If you do have a well that you have been using and it's working okay, um, or you're considering using, uh, make sure you get a water test. Bring it up, uh, energy labs or any other facility that can test water and, and have them analyze it for uh, irrigation suitability. Um, and so they're going to look at the uh, oh, SARs, EC levels, total dissolved solids, and a whole bunch of other stuff in there to make sure it's going to be safe water to use uh, to irrigate plants. And energy laboratories is, is located in, in Billings, is, yep. is their closest place. Uh, and I think they have a, have a website you can just uh, Google it and there, their phone number will come up. Another handy resource is you can go to the Extension Office and they have the Well Assist Program or Well something. And they have the sample bottles right there at the Extension Office so you can take it. And uh, so you have all the forms and everything you need to fill out, take your sample according to the way they want it done and then bring it up there. So it's pretty handy. And I think they typically, do they typically want that water sampled and brought into the lab within like 24 or 48 yeah. hours? That's for uh, testing for like cholera or, okay. or bacteria. No, but they do want it within 24 <coughs> hours. Okay. That's what that is, so consider those. Yeah. Another big thing with irrigation is do we have enough flow rate? You know, if you're doing anything besides the garden or yard, if you're looking at, oh, I got, you know, a 10 acre hay field or something I want to use this well for, well, it's going to take a significant amount of water. Uh, so making sure that you, you have a well test or uh, know the capacity of that well. Again, that's probably the biggest limitation um, or one of the limitations we see in Bighorn County too is just not uh, real high producing. We do have a couple or one pivot I know of uh, that is running off a well over towards Busby um, and uh, 
or a couple of them, I think, over there. Uh, but that's got the Reno Creek uh, geology over there, and it's, it has some pretty good wells. So, talking about all these different systems, and Tyler touched on this application efficiency, because especially if you're pumping water, every hour that you're pumping water is going to cost you money. And uh, so, the more efficient you can get that water onto uh, into the soil for that plant to use and not lose the extra water, uh, that's, that's money you're saving. Um, as we're looking at flood irrigation systems, uh, if you're on like the two-legging system or the Bighorn Ditch or one of these big gravity systems, you're just paying an annual um, water share fee, you know, per acre kind of a thing. And, you know, it, it's, what, what's the concern? Well, it can also be proper irrigation efficiency application is going to also improve or keep your ground in, in suitable condition to grow a crop. Uh, poor water management can really set you back, especially if you've got any saline issues. Um, you can start souring up your ground if you don't apply it correctly. And, this, and especially getting the water back off of the ground um, so you're not just flooding it and letting it sit there. So flood irrigation, as Tyler went through a bunch of different systems, you know, we're talking typically about 30 to 40% efficiency. You know, you see a lot of this on irrigated pastures. Uh, the ground's kind of rolling, but it does have some general slope to it. Not, nothing's been really land level. Um, you're lucky to get 30% efficiency in some of that. So, I mean, 70% of the water you're putting on is just running off and not being uh, held there for the plants to use. And so that's a lot of waste. Uh, border dikes, uh, you can get up to about 60%, and that's a, that's a graded border. Uh, that's where we have a proper slope to the field that's been leveled. Uh, minimal size slope where you've got borders every 60 to 110 feet, uh, depending on your size slopes. Uh, corrugations is uh, every four feet is typical for corrugations that we see and use this in small grains and, and uh, pasture or, or in alfalfa crops. Uh, corrugations work really good. Um, they, they help control that water from slipping off to the side on the side slope so you get it. Uh, a better uniform application for the length of the field. If you think about a 40 acre parcel, um, a square, um, just trying to get everything covered, like you can see in those aerial photos. Sometimes you can see, obviously, on fields that areas that are not getting irrigated, and that's usually because there's side slope there, or there's a high spot, and that water just can't push and get onto those. So, corrugations are a way to kind of control that water and get it uh, more uniformly uh, applied to that field. Furrows are about the same as corrugations. You see that with sugar beets, corn, soybeans, uh, furrow irrigated, or you got a deeper ditch every, um, every 24 inches or whatever this uh, spacing is. Sprinklers, as uh, Tyler already highlighted, 82% efficiency is typical of, for the systems we see installed um, with the six foot drop height and everything on the nozzles. Wheel lines, uh, side rolls are about 70% efficiency. Traveling guns, lower, uh, a lot of horsepower per acre. Um, not as uniform of application because of the speed of that reel and, and uh, trying to manage that. Plus you're shooting off of you know, 120 foot radius of water and you're trying to get uniform droplets you know, from one nozzle. It's, it's pretty tough to get that efficiency as high. Um, but it, it does fit some certain situations with pastures and all that where you can't um, install any of these other systems. And then subsurface drip, and talking about the drip tape, these are the highest efficiency and those are about 92%. Um, and we do have some producers working uh, on looking into this and, and uh, it's pretty exciting to see the potential of that. The big challenges of course is what Tyler highlighted with the filtering and also that hardness of water. We've got to make sure that we're managing it correctly. Um, but uh, I think it has huge potential on our, on our um, irrigated crop in the, in the valley. Uh, but it is costly per acre. I think our, you know, we're, I, I just talked to a Netafin dealer yesterday, and uh, they're right there around 1500 to 1800 bucks an acre um, for the system. So, um, so or it could be higher. It just depends on everything that's needed to treat that water. Filtration is the big variable. You know, how much we got to filter out. And, uh, make your holes bigger. What's that? <laughs> make your holes bigger. Make the holes bigger, yeah. <laughs> then more stuff can get into. <laughs> so. well, what's the life expectancy or are they estimating? I mean, does an industry standard on the drip? Some sort of drip yeah. uh, I've heard systems down in Texas where they've been using it for 20 years that are 20 years in the ground with the drip tape. Um, and there's a lot of different, right, or different, like, 
thick <laughs> mill of that of that, you know, so there's it, it depends if you know management too. Yeah, and with like a sugar bee rotation versus a cotton rotation, it's gonna be different with uh, type of field work and disturbance. You know, if you gotta go into sugar beet field and harvest even though they're doing a minimum till on it, you know, if the conditions you got to, and then also rodent damage can be huge too. I, I imagine you just uh, different variables. But they they do uh, figure on it's not just an annual deal for the, the buried subsurface drip because of the cost of installation. If they can put higher quality material in the ground, that will be there for hopefully 10, 15 years. But. So, um, any questions, I guess, other than that one? I have a tendency to talk really fast, so <laughs> if I need to back up a minute. I want to tell you that the type or Evan is an expert now with his high tunnel and microwave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got one year under my belt with drip tape, so <laughs> it is awesome though. It is it's great. It, uh, I got it on my phone. It's all Wi-Fi. It just tells me when the tomatoes are done watering and <laughs> cucumbers. Okay. All right. Thanks, Evan. Uh, so 